Hello, this is Inverness calling Shrewsbury, and I'm Jeff Szynski, the author of this book, Travels from My Twilight Zone, subtitled Morphine, Memories and Make-Believe. In the introduction, I explain why words like Shrewsbury are very difficult for me to say because of my recent surgery and, well, close encounter with the Grim Reaper. In the memory section, I talk about my upbringing in Scotland, in the east end of Glasgow, and the influence of my Polish father, my Scottish mother, and my seven older siblings as we travelled around the country in Dad's beat-up dormobile. Here's a little extract from that book, which happily I recorded before I went under the knife. The day I told Dad I would never play football for Scotland was one of those days when he was threatening to electrocute himself. Not on purpose, of course, and nothing to do with any disappointment about my poor prospects as a soccer internationalist. It was because, when I arrived home from school that day, he was crouching behind our old black and white television set and poking around his innards with a long screwdriver. On the screen was an ever-changing monochrome kaleidoscope of jagged images and wavy lines. Occasionally a picture would form and then roll upwards, accelerating like a turbo-powered elevator. As usual, Dad hadn't bothered to disconnect the set from the mains electricity, so from time to time he would let out a yelp and proclaim, Name of God! in his rich baritone voice, accented with that exotic blend of Polish and Glaswegian. These small but frequent shocks never seemed to deter him from trying his hand as a TV repairman. He had no fear of electricity and would regularly mend blown fuses and dead appliances by removing the plugs and completing the circuit with a wad of metallic paper torn from a pack of NBC Regal cigarettes. As a qualified welder, fixing TV sets was really beyond his capability, but he was loath to admit defeat too soon before calling in a professional who would undoubtedly remove the set from our home, take it to a workshop and leave us for up to three days with nothing to do but talk to each other. This was one such day, and it was how we got blethering about my day at school and how the PE teacher had watched my pathetic efforts on the football pitch and declared that I wasn't likely to be making an appearance at Hamden any time in the near or distant future. But I'm quite good at art, I told Dad, hoping this would in some unlikely way compensate for my failings in sport. Dad nodded and then lit another cigarette and gazed past me to the empty space where the TV set had been. He looked lost and in obvious need of a distraction, so that's when I told him about the Hitler thing. It goes without saying that I owe my life to Adolf Hitler. (laughs) In fact, that probably epitomises the very kind of thing that should always go without saying, even if it's true. In the make-believe section of the book, I go on flights of fancy with a series of allegedly funny stories. In this coming extract, Just Right, we find Goldilocks, in her dotage, writing her own memoirs in a nursing home. I've asked my friend Karen Barkey, the actor, to voice this up for me. As my pen raced across the page, Goldilocks lifted a spoonful of soup to her lips and tasted it. It's too hot she said, replacing the spoon in its bowl. I'll give it another minute. It's funny things, spoons, ain't they? You know that story of the one that ran away with the dish? Again, I nodded. Well, that's baloney. Turns out they got mixed up with the wrong people and were, uh, how can I put it, made to disappear. Of course, those were different times, tough days. It's tougher for us girls. You tangle with the wrong people, you'd end up broke like old Mother Hubbard or, or living in a big shoe as a single parent with ten kids. I, I mean to say, a shoe, for God's sake. Talk about taking away a person's dignity. Well, Shrewsbury, I hope that gives you a little flavour of the book. As I say, it's called Travels from My Twilight Zone by me, Jeff Szynski, subtitled Morphine, Memories and Make-Believe. And thank you once again for asking me to take part.